This module shows the application of MPLS TP in a utility environment. Before we explain how MPLS TP can benefit you, let's take a look at your world. A typical utility grid has one or more generation substations interfacing the power plants via step up transformers. Power is transmitted via the high voltage grid and several transmission substations to the distribution substations, where the power is stepped down by transformers and delivered to customers. All of this is controlled from one or more dispatching centers. The fundamental applications that are needed to control the grid, like SCADA, non-operational data and voice, are backhauled from the substations to the dispatching centers. While adapting the current grid to a smart grid, the need for bi-directional communication on a large scale becomes a must. Your communication network will look a lot like some of the networks that telcos operate. Telecom equipment will be installed along the transmission lines in each substation and even in parts of the distribution network. In the dispatching center, you'd find the different applications connected via local network infrastructure to the network nodes in the grid. The dispatching center has a high density of data traffic and a limited number of sites. This is similar to a core network. Along the transmission lines, you have relatively simple traffic flows to a high number of sites over medium-sized bandwidth. This is typical for a metro or aggregation network that interconnects major sites with the core network. The network in the distribution grid might have a high number of sites with a diversity of connection options and requirements. It's like an access network. Let's have a look at the challenges. With the constant migration to IP Ethernet and the adding of new applications, the network is constantly evolving. The network becomes an essential part of the grid, and the question is how to handle this with limited budgets and resources. Since your network is similar to that of a telco, let's see how telcos have approached the problem. More specifically, how have telcos adapted to the huge increase of users and applications and their geographical spread? Telco operators have optimized their networks by eliminating layers and replacing their aging SDH SORnet infrastructure with directly coupled IP MPLS routers on an optical infrastructure. Together with the reduction of network layers, the IP MPLS network is extended from core to access layer for new applications. Removing network layers has reduced capital expenses, but expanding the IP MPLS network from core to access has increased operating expenses. This is because of the increased complexity when an IP MPLS network scales from tens of nodes to thousands or more nodes. The increased complexity comes from the different dynamic protocols for discovery, reservation and restoration which run in an IP MPLS network. These protocols are needed in very dynamic environments, but in the relatively static environment of a metro or aggregation network, they are overkill. To reduce complexity while still offering the benefits of an IP MPLS network, the industry together with the IETF and ITU has developed a new standard which is called MPLS TP or Multi-Protocol Label Switching Transport Profile. This evolution of the MPLS standards adds extra features previously not found in the MPLS standard, like bidirectional paths, the fact that you can run the network from a management system, and in-band monitoring features. This evolution of the standards guarantees interworking with existing MPLS equipment because it uses the same MPLS forwarding and pseudo-wire infrastructure already available on the market for years. This new network topology offers a combination of IP MPLS in the core, where dynamic behavior is important, and an MPLS TP aggregation network towards the access, where scalability and simplicity are important. This new standard lets you replace your aging SDH SORnet infrastructure with an MPLS infrastructure and reduce complexity at the same time. And it can be operated the same way as your current infrastructure. Let's now compare SDH SORnet with MPLS TP to see the advantages of this new standard. SDH SORnet networks are centrally provisioned through a management system and MPLS-TP networks are too. 
and MPLS TP supports static NMS based provisioning. It does not require the complex provisioning protocols of IP MPLS. So as with SDH SawNet, MPLS TP provisioning can be done via a point and click user interface. SDH SawNet uses automatic protection switching via predefined active and backup paths. MPLS TP uses similar automatic protection switching triggered by small control packets that follow the same path as the transported data. That's why MPLS TP can guarantee reconfigurations as quick as SDH SawNet under all circumstances. SDH SawNet uses the path overhead for automatic protection switching. MPLS TP comes with a comprehensive set of OAM fault management and performance monitoring features. It allows you to monitor services and engage in proactive and easy fault location to limit your downtime. SDH SawNet transmits the data in a bi-directional pre-setup channel. MPLS TP uses standard bi-directional switched paths. They are co-routed up front to avoid the differential delay issues which can occur in an IP MPLS environment. The popularity of SDH SawNet is largely due to the high level of interworking between different vendors thanks to standardization efforts. MPLS TP uses the same forwarding mechanisms already available on the market, so it guarantees interoperability with IP MPLS you benefit from transparent networks which are future-proof. The advantages we've just described explain why MPLS TP is so popular with the industry and telecom operators. And with its transport profile, MPLS TP satisfies all the service requirements at utility customers too. It's future-proof, cost-efficient to operate and interoperable with your world. MPLS TP a solid foundation.